guys, welcome to this week's bucket list build where I'll be showing you how I turn five lines on a piece of paper into the one of the greatest pieces of furniture I've built to date. So I hope you enjoy the build. Let's get dusty. All right, let's hit the ground running. I skipped all of the milling footage on this video. We've just got a lot of ground to cover and I want to get there. So I got a bunch of fat boards and turned them into a bunch of flat boards and we're working on this angled case which poses quite a few problems uh, with dovetails, layouts, having to fit all of that together. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just uh, getting all of the dovetails laid out and we'll cut them by hand, remove all the waste by hand, get them fit together perfectly. And while I do that, I want to tell you why this is a bucket list build. So a little about this build, this client has followed me on Instagram for quite a while and he reached out with zero stipulation on what the piece should be. The only thing he said is he wanted me to build something that I'd be proud to put in my portfolio that I hadn't had the opportunity to build yet, which is kind of the dream for somebody to support your creativity like that. So when I started woodworking, I wanted to build anything. And then I met my buddy, Tim, and he went to furniture school and I knew I wanted to build furniture. And then I came across Michael Fortune's work and I knew I wanted to build studio furniture. And this has really been my first opportunity to give that a shot and really stretch my design ability. Now, the final design is probably not everybody's cup of tea, but that's kind of what I love about great design, is that it elicits a really verbose reaction and custom means no worries about mass appeal. So very fortunate. This is why it's a bucket list build and back to what's going on in the video. You saw me cut all those dovetails for the case. A really cool layout for the pins and tails on the top. The bottom, doesn't matter so much. Uh, they're just kind of a normal spacing. One question I feel a lot is, are the thin pins on those dovetails, they look pretty, but are they just gonna snap off? And the answer to that is yes and no, they're not gonna snap off. Uh, yes, it does diminish the strength of the pins, but for any of the forces this case will ever see in its life, it's not a concern. So the case or box that the drawers write in, there will be three drawers, and before we can get the case together, there's one last step that I need to do, uh, which is these slick little drawer stops. They're just big pin springs with little blocks of wood on a slope surface, and they allow the drawer to go in, but not come back out unless you reach up and uh, click those up. Very satisfying. So we'll knock off the edges, make sure everything's smooth, the places that are really hard to sand, and we can get the case glued together. Clamps weren't really working, but where clamps fail, straps excel. And how pretty are those dovetails? I always love when the case comes together, it really starts to take form and I can see what I drew down on paper start to come to life. So now that the case is done, let's go ahead and move on to the back. I got the case done and the back panel, I was like, oh shoot, that's a triangle with the small side down and I've got to come in from the small side. Uh, if you think about that, it's hard to get one single piece into that to slide up into it. So I made this keystone center and then two angled sides. And using the off cut from the bottom of the case, I can trim out the bottom to get that continuous grain on a part that nobody will ever see. The back sides are my low key favorite part of every build. There's just something about how tidy everything comes together. And now that the drawer parts are all roughed out, it's time to get a little closer on the size. I like to go just snug in the opening side to side and maybe a 
16th or so vertically to ensure that as relative humidity changes throughout the year, none of the drawers get stuck. Taking thousands off at a time with a hand plane is just so satisfying and really allows you to dial stuff in uh, rather than just taking it straight off of the table saw. Looking good, let's get some joinery. Yay, dovetails. All right, this is where everything really starts to step up in complication. We're doing a 10 degree slant on the drawer sides with a 10 degree slope on the dovetails. And I made this little block here um, as a custom dovetail marker just to get those marked out easily. Doing everything by hand. There's no way to do this on a machine. Uh, I'm sure somebody could figure out how to do this on a table saw, but it's it would be way more complicated and in my opinion, less cool. So there's just something satisfying about bringing all of this joinery in by hand. Didn't that feel good? That just felt good. It always feels good. All right, now that the joinery is done for the boxes, drawer boxes, uh, we just have to get the bottoms done. Get a quick resaw, glue up for the bottoms and raising those panels by hand and then finessing that fit with a block plane so they slide easily into the slips that I've made. And those slips will attach on the inside bottom of the drawer for the bottoms to ride in. We're going to dress up all of the interior parts of the drawer before glue up, just to make sure everything's free of mill marks and just super baby butt smooth as you reach on into the inside of the drawer. And that is what a week's worth of dovetails looks like. We've got one of four steps done, but the last bit of this is gonna go quite a bit quicker. Uh, this is the tedious part. Now we're getting to the fun part. So first things first is to fit the drawers a little better. We went snug on the side, side to side. So by taking the hand plane and just shaving those off until they're easy to open, easy to close, but you can't slam them. OG soft close, baby. Now that we've got the case done, we're moving on to the base assembly and lay. But I made these forms for the lower stretcher slash shelf and the one that sits below the case. And then we're kind of deep, kind of getting to the finish line here. Get pretty close anyway. So uh, we're gonna take these laminations we made. I am going to get these jointed and stuck together with some tape. And then we'll laminate those on these forms and move into the legs and then we're done. So yeah, let's do that. And here's my hot tip for the day. Before turning on the vacuum press, get inside the bag. You can really test out the pressure in there. It's like you're in space. Wanna hear something cool? Wait for it, wait for it. All right, and that is how you bend your wood. So that's all for the laminations. Let's go ahead and move on to the legs and the base. Warning, this is made out of some of the prettiest cherry I have ever seen. 
free cutting the first leg by hand and I just went ahead and built a template to make sure that everything was the same. Normally I would do these all individually but fitting those bent laminations into the legs uh, required that they were all exactly the same. All right, now instead of just angles, we've got curves and we're fitting the curves to the angles and the angles the curves and the angles have curves and the curves have angles. Fun stuff. but at some point I decided little half balls would be cool on top of the legs. I don't have a lathe, so bringing those in by hand. The discerning viewer may have noticed that we've forgotten a very critical part. And I'd like to introduce you all to my procrastination. Um, and that's drawer pulls. As classy as gaff tape looks, I don't know that it's going with the vibe of this piece. It's too much slow. A football, no other brass. My eye tells me that's the way to go. On this axis, it's too bad. All the time I put in this, I think this one definitely earned a name in my portfolio. And for this one, I named it Valence after valence electrons, uh, something that's needed for any chemical reaction to occur, which is perfectly fitting as this is going to a recently retired chemistry professor. And I hope it gets at least some reaction out of you. This is definitely one of those love it or hate it projects.
I show you those money shots. I just want to say thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this build. One of my most challenging and rewarding projects to date. If you aren't already and you think I've earned it, get subscribed, hit that like button. If you like the video, if you dislike the video, go ahead and hit that dislike button two times. Catch you on the next build.